Yo, welcome back to another tutorial today. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I just got lazy and didn't, I didn't wanna set up the camera, so we're just gonna go with the whole mic setup right now. So let's just roll the intro and get right into it. Okay, so a while back I made a tutorial covering the basics of iMovie and since then I've gotten a lot of requests to make the second part to that video. So here it is, iMovie Basics Part 2. If you haven't watched the part 1 and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll leave the link below or I'll leave that little flag thing that pops up on your screen somewhere around on your screen. I don't know. So I left off covering the tools in iMovie, so let's just open up the program and get going with that. The first thing I'm going to start with is a tool called Stabilization. And this will allow you to make your shaky footage look a lot smoother. In this tool, you have the Shaky Footage Video Stabilizer and the Rolling Shutter Stabilizer. Both are useful, but I'll start with the rolling shutter one since you'll probably won't even use it. To use this tool, all you have to do is come over here and click on this little checkbox right here next to the thing that says fix rolling shutter. And then you'll see right away you have a drop down menu that pops up and this allows you to adjust how much of uh, an adjustment you want it to make. Um, it's pretty intuitive, it goes from low to extra high, so if you have rolling shutter in your video, which I'll explain what that is in a second, and you want to adjust it, depending on how much of an adjustment you want to make, you can either select low or extra high. I'm just going to leave that medium. The computer will then analyze your clip for a dominant motion or a rolling shutter, and then analyze it and try to correct it, and then it'll take a few seconds um, for it to fix that. I already, I've already done it on this clip, now after that's done, it should have fixed your rolling shutter. Uh, if you don't know what a rolling shutter is or what the computer does when this happens, the computer is basically looking for warps and bends in the video caused by recording each frame of a clip. If you imagine a video being a bunch of pictures playing together and it takes each picture by taking a piece of the picture bit by bit instead of just taking the whole picture at once, that's what rolling shutter is. You're going to find that objects that should be straight are looking to be bent in the video, but I typically don't see this in a lot of video so it's not really too much of an issue to worry about the shaky footage video stabilizer on the other hand is just as easy to use and will come in handy way more this stabilizer will analyze your clip looking for motion that you typically get when holding a camera handheld and it will try to correct it by moving and rotating um, and also scaling up your clip as necessary so it appears like it was shot on a stabilizer this tool is great for fixing small shaky hand movements but it won't be able to fix your clip if the camera is shaking all over the place Say for example, if you were running with your camera and you try to use this, it's just not going to work. You're just going to run into more problems than you had before. It'll start warping your video and stuff like that, or it'll scale it up way too much and it just, it won't even look good or usable. So this tool is the same thing. You're just going to click on this box to check it and use it. And instead of the drop down menu, you actually have a slider for percentage going from zero to hundred percent to adjust how much of this you want to be stabilized. If you're at a low number, like zero to 50, you'll notice that it crops in a little bit just because it's going to have to crop in to hide the way it's moving the camera while it's playing back but if you go from somewhere like even from 50 to 100 you're gonna notice a significant amount of cropping in your video and you're not gonna want to use it especially if you're shooting in 1080 you're just gonna lose so much quality it's not even worth it all right so moving on the next two tools are super easy to use and work together so I'll try to go over them quickly to save time the first one is simply the volume tool which you can access by clicking on this little thing that looks like a speaker and it'll drop down and it'll give you some options this allows you to see Simply adjust the volume of your clips or a separate audio clip, but I'll explain what each of these little things does. Auto will automatically adjust the volume of your clip to make it louder or quieter depending on the, things, the other things playing around it or the overall volume of the clips in the video. This little button right here, which looks like the same icon we just clicked on but a little smaller, will simply mute your audio so it doesn't play. And if you want to unmute it, you just check that you just check that button again. If you want to manually adjust the volume of your clip, you can use this slider moving it left to bring it quieter or to the right to make it louder. 400% might obviously be too much. 100% um, is the original volume of the clip and what it was met and what it was originally recorded at. Now you can also lower the volume of other clips right here by checking this little box. Um, and then you'll notice you have this slider available. What this tool does will allow the clip that you have selected 
whether it be audio in the video clip or a separate audio clip and it will take the volume of that clip and prioritize it over the volume of the other clips that have audio in them that are playing at that same time it's important to point out here that though that you can also adjust the volume directly on the video or audio clip using this little bar or line right here simply by dragging it up to bring it louder or down to make it quieter now you notice when i bring it up here you'll see some yellow and a little bit of red up there that means your clip is clipping and that is when you want to that's what you want to stay away from when you're adjusting your audio clips um because this yellow means that your audio clip will become distorted and just won't sound good just because you're pushing it to the limits uh another thing you can do by selecting this bar right here is keyframing your audio so to keyframe your audio just press alt on your keyboard and left click with the, on the mouse in the position you want to drop a keyframe with. You can then drag the keyframe up or down to bring the volume down at that point. So for instance, you can add a keyframe here to bring the volume up at this point. You can add multiple keyframes, bring volume up and down and to hold volume. And this is definitely a handy tool. So it kind of does it automatically for you and you don't have to be stuck on just one set volume. Now on top of that, we also have this tool over here, which looks like a bunch of little bars. Um, I'm going to call this tool the EQ just because it has the equalizer in it, um, but it's also a noise reduction tool. So we'll cover the noise reduction first. You can use noise reduction just by clicking on this box right here that says reduce background noise. And then it'll give you another slider to adjust the percentage of how much you want to use it by. But basically, if you have a weird noise in your video, like some weird humming or something while you're recording, and you want to get rid of that, you can try pressing reduce background noise and it will analyze that constant sound in your video. The key to this feature working is that you have a constant sound in the background that is going on that will key out, not something that's really like changing. Um, for example, if there was like a crowd murmur or just like a, a buzz of like a radiator or something in your background video, that noise is constant and it can your computer will be able to sample that out and create a sample that it can match out to and then squash those frequencies that are in your video so that way you can't really hear that noise as much um a problem you might notice with this depending on how much of a level you use if you use 100 percent, you probably notice it is that it could cut into the other frequencies of your audio meaning that it could cut out like a little bit of your voice or make it sound like kind of you're underwater or something if you do this so just keep that in mind um, I don't really need that, so I'm going to turn that off for now. And then I'm going to talk about the equalizer. So the equalizer can also help you do this um, just a little bit more manually, or it can help you just improve the overall quality of your audio. So to access this, you just come to this drop down menu and click on it. Flat is just going to leave it at what it was, um, what you recorded at. But then you have a few other options here, which are all pretty basic and intuitive. Voice Enhance will try to find the frequencies that most voices are in and enhance those frequencies so your voices are louder same thing with music um, loudness will overall just make it really louder pretty much boosting all the frequencies hum reduction is kind of like a background noise thing but then you have other settings down here bass boost treble boost and so you had a really deep voice for example and you wanted to flatten that boomy sound a little bit you could click bass reduce or if you wanted to focus on the higher pitch frequencies you could do treble boost and you don't really have to know that much about frequencies you just it's kind of intuitive treble is high pitch things bass is those really low boomy things and then all the other settings in here are pretty intuitive or pretty self-explanatory so not too hard to use all right there you have it part two of the iMovie basics hopefully between these videos i've covered enough for you guys to get a good hand on iMovie and really help you get the most out of your program and start working through it easily enough that you're not worried about like what this button does or what that stuff does so you can just focus on your editing um by using these tools you will definitely step up your editing game in iMovie and be on your way to making some epic videos and i know for some people this might seem like a lot but don't worry you'll get there this stuff will all become second nature to you and then you'll be questioning like then you'll be thinking to yourself one day like man iMovie so easy i don't know how i ever struggled with this or anything like that that was a lot of talking from me though so i'm gonna end the video here guys if you liked it please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos and as always leave a comment down below to let me know if you'd like me to cover something else but until then guys i will see you guys next time all right peace out